Hello Math1093. In this video we're going to talk for just a little bit about how to graph the cosine function. That is the function f of t equals cosine of t. So hopefully by this time you've watched the video called sign making and seen a little bit about how we plot points on the graph of the sine function. In this video we're going to do this a little bit more quickly and come up with a graph that reflects a one full period of the cosine function. All right, so we're going to use the same idea as before, except this time, since we're working with the cosine function, we're going to pay attention to the fact that t represents an arc length on the unit circle. Arc length on unit circle. And then cosine of t represents the x-coordinate, the x-coordinate of a point on the unit circle. So this time we're going to be transferring horizontal measurements in this uh, unit circle graph over to this uh, as the outputs for this function. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's just think for a little bit about what some of the key values for this function are going to be. First of all, what happens when t is zero? When t is zero, we start right here and we don't go anywhere. That's the point one comma zero. So the x coordinate when t is zero is going to be one. Uh, so let's make a mark on our graph for one. There we go. Let's make one for negative one as well. We'll need that eventually. And we're going to have a point on our graph right there at zero comma one. That is t is zero and the cosine of t is one. All right. Now let's just sketch out a few other key points here. If I go from here all the way up to the North Pole, I'm at the point zero one and my t is equal to one half of pi. So if I mark that over on this graph, again, think about taking that arc length there that I just drew, uh, this one, and stretching it out. If I stretch that out, I'm going to get something about this length, and I'm just guessing here mostly, but I think I'm going to get something about that long. That's going to be one half of pi. And at that point, since the x-coordinate of this point is zero, my cosine is going to be zero. Uh, so cosine of one half pi is going to be zero. So that is also a point on my graph. Okay, now what's happening between those two points? Well, as I go from here to here, t is steadily increasing, and x decreases, that x coordinate decreases a little bit at first, and then rather rapidly after that. So in this graph, I'm going to see the cosine decrease a little bit at first, gently, and then more and more rapidly until we get down to here. And it should be, it should hit that at a slope of about negative one uh, for reasons that you'll learn about in calculus. All right, now what happens after that? So after that, let's let t run from one half of pi to pi. So when t is pi, I'm at the point negative one comma zero. So that means that cosine of pi is gonna be that x coordinate, which is negative one. So when I'm at pi, my cosine is gonna be negative one. And you'll notice as I run through those t values, my x coordinate decreases pretty quickly at first, and then gently as I get closer to negative one. So in this graph, I'm gonna see a fairly rapid rate of change at first. So kind of like this, followed by a more gentle decrease as we reach the minimum. There we go. All right, so again, this point here is pi comma negative one. That is the cosine of pi is negative one. Okay, and then after that, what's going to happen? Well, as we go from t equals pi to t equals 3 halves of pi, that cosine is going to increase back from negative 1 to 0, gently at first, and then more rapidly as we get close to t equals 3 halves pi. Okay, I'm going to end up drawing over all of this, but okay. So there we go. And then finally, in the fourth quadrant, t is going to go from 3 halves of pi to 2 pi, and my x coordinate is going to return to 1. So right as I get around here, I don't know what that's doing there. Sorry, this little thing, I have no idea. This is 2 pi, and my cosine's going from 0 up to 1. And there you have it. That is one full period of the cosine function. Now we're going to talk about periods some more, but the period of this function is 2 pi, and that means that the function values repeat, repeat in the same order after t equals 2 pi. That's roughly what it means. There's a slightly more technical definition, which is that cosine of t plus 2 pi is always equal to cosine of t. 
So anyway, this graph can be continued after that, after t equals 2 pi, and it'll just keep going like this. And we'll continue to have a nice little wave here. We can also continue this graph to the left of the uh, vertical axis. That is, it makes perfect sense for negative values of t. So there you go. There you have a nice little picture of the cosine function, the graph of the cosine function. You may notice, by the way, it looks kind of like the graph of the sine function in certain ways. That is, if you were to start here, uh, let's see, if you were to start right here and start watching what the graph does, so trace out what the graph does as we start here and move to the right, that's exactly the same as the graph of the sine function. It's just been shifted over. So the graph of the cosine function is a horizontal shift of the graph of the sine function. Okay, so anyway, that's it. We'll play around with transformations of the cosine function some more in class.